What's up guys and welcome back to Planet Zoo. It's a beautiful morning and uh, today we are going to be adding a new species and a new habitat to our oasis, which I'm pretty excited about. But first, we've got a little bit of house cleaning to do. A lot of stuff happened overnight and uh, our, our whole baby thing is working, man. Like this this is really crazy. So you guys know the Springbok, or not the Springbok, the, um, the Jim's Bok and the ostriches were two focal points of ours a few episodes ago to start up our, our baby churning, baby factory type thing for us to start getting more conservation credits. Well, we haven't really paid attention to it, but dude, we have a lot of Jim's Bach out here. We've got a couple fighting here over alpha status, actually three of them, but we've got so many babies, a lot of which are starting to mature. So I think we're gonna want to start releasing some of those. Also, even more so over here on the other side, we have a ton of ostriches. Now, unfortunately, Luana, is this Luana right here? Hold on, let me, let me see who's here. Luana, She's the daughter of, uh, of, of Braun over here, and uh, he just got her pregnant. So we've got a little bit of inbreeding happening. I, it happened before I could get to it. We should have released her immediately as soon as she turned to an adult. So what we're going to do is we are going to start uh, start releasing these guys. So Renoko, ooh, gold. Oh, shoot, this is going to be tough. I don't really want to release the golds, but I guess we get more for that. Umusupe. Yeah, we're I, I think we're gonna have to, unfortunately. Or we could we could put them in the Animal Trade Center and save them for later. How old is Braun? Braun is 7.8 years old, and if we take a look at the Zoopedia here, he could have babies until death, which is 46 years. So we we definitely don't need any more males. Pretty much only females, and obviously we're not gonna gonna inbreed. So let's you know what? Release them into the wild. 54, not bad. Release this one into the wild, not bad. Can release this one into the wild, dada, not bad. And then we're gonna keep, we're gonna keep Omusupe for now. That was Bronze's original mate, but um, we're definitely gonna have to keep an eye on Luana here. As soon as she has her babies, we're gonna release her and the babies as well. Oop, looks like we've got something smoking over here. Actually, you know what? Let me see. Let me let me see if we can get an even better ostrich. So I'm looking for a, a female ostrich. I'm looking for somebody who has a lot of appeal. How much appeal does uh, does what's her name have? Omusupe, 1181. Yeah, I, I think we're gonna have a hard time a hard time beating that. But we ooh ooh hello. Here's a gold, dude. What if what if we got this gold? I'm gonna adopt Bunmi here, and it's it's a gold albino, dude. No way. This is gonna be sick. So we're gonna have Brawn mate with Bunmi, and we're gonna have albino ostriches. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. I actually saw a comment the other day. One of you guys was like, you shouldn't get points for releasing albino animals into the wild because they don't have camouflage. They're not gonna like fit in with their environment, and that's. That's very, very true. I can't, I can't lie to you. But uh, we're gonna see what happens here. Might get us some very valuable babies. I guess, um, I guess we're just gonna kind of experiment and try it out. Here we go. Let's get it, baby. Oh, look at that big, beautiful female. Brody boy, where are you at, brother? Oh, he's already checking around. Is that Braun right there? Dude, he's small compared to her. She's massive. All right, so this is gonna be interesting. We're gonna have to keep an eye out and see what happens over here in the ostrich baby farm. Oh shoot, Luana's dropping a deuce and then she's about to have some kids. These are the inbred, the inbred ostriches with Braun. This is Braun's daughter. I mean, things are happening quickly. As soon as she has these, we're getting rid of her and I feel bad. Oh, we, we can get rid of her right now. Did she have the babies already? Is she currently having the babies? Oh, there's the babies. We might have a little mating dance happening here too. So we're gonna let all these babies be born. I do feel really bad. Let me see their genetics. Yeah, but he, he just got Omusupe pregnant. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna release, we're gonna release Luana into the wild. I feel bad, but I mean, I, I, oh, we had, we had an albino one. We, she gave us an albino baby. No way, that's cute. I think we should be getting some albinos if, uh, if what's her name over here ever gets with the program, but, uh, yeah, we had to get rid of her. Inbreeding is not a thing in our zoo. That's not good for the animals. It's eventually gonna break down their genetics and, and obviously it's it's just not healthy. Dude, this is ridiculous. Meanwhile, Enda's having more babies right now. Oh my goodness. We have, 
How many animals do we have in here? Barrier status is starting to look a little bit weak. We might wanna might wanna call the keeper. We've got 10 animals in here. They take so long to mature, but dude, once we start releasing some of these crocs to the wild, I bet we get a ton of research points for that. Dude, I'm, I'm kind of excited. We're up to 1960. Need a few more to be able to start getting lions and tigers and stuff, but things are looking good. All right, let's focus on adding a new animal today. So looking through the, the list of animals currently available, you guys can see we've got some good ones that we still need to add in. We want some, some grizzly bears, some mandrills, spotted hyenas. There's, uh, ooh, the, the tortoises would definitely be good and the Galapagos tortoises. There's even Komodo dragons and stuff. So there's a lot of cool stuff here that eventually we're gonna have to get to. But I've kind of got an idea in mind, all right? So you guys know our focus lately has been trying to get as many conservation credits as possible so we can start getting into some even crazier animals. And obviously we wanna do that soon because the longer we have breeding, the more animals we're gonna be able to release, the more conservation credits we're gonna get. So we wanna focus on our breeding program right now. And that was, I mean, kind of what we were already messing with today. I mean, we've got like the ostriches here as well as the, uh, the gyms back over here. Like everything seems to be going pretty well, but we could improve it. How are we going to improve it, you may ask? Flamingos. Flamingos are our answer. So if we go into animal trading here, we're going to go into our market and let's take a look at, we're going to take cash listings off. We're going to take a look at the greater flamingo, which is going to be right down here. And uh, let's see, let's see what we're working with here. Let's see what we can do. Ooh, I'm going to, I'm going to buy the, the females that we can while we can. So you guys can see most of these are not available in cash, particularly the females you have to actually pay money for, but it looks like we've, we've got a, a good, a good group here. I found a few earlier before I started recording that I, I snapped up really, really quickly. So you guys can see we've got two males there, one female and then another male, two females, another male, that sort of thing. So you guys get what we're working with. We've got kind of a good basis. Now, the crazy thing is, is if we take a look at the Zoopedia here, look at the stats. So you can have up to 500 flamingos in one group, up to 500 of them. Doesn't matter if they're male or female. They're not gonna get angry. They're not gonna fight over dominance or anything. They're just gonna all be chill with each other, which is great. They're monogamous and polygonous, and they, um, they've got a life expectancy of 60 years. They mature in three years to be able to have babies and they're sterile upon death. So like, this is crazy. Now, if you look down here, they can only have one offspring per mating event, which is obviously not good. I mean, the ostriches are having like three or four at a time. However, their incubation period is one month and then their interbirth period is 12 months. So basically every, 13 months, you're going to have a new one and it's just going to rapidly, rapidly increase and we're going to rapidly get more and more of these things. So at first we'll kind of let the population build up and then eventually we're going to be able to sell these things off like crazy. Can you imagine if we had 250 female flamingos that were giving off offspring constantly? Insane. This is going to be crazy. So I'm excited for this, but we've got to build them a huge exhibit first. And I'm not exactly sure where we want to put that. I'm trying to think here. We could start putting it over this way. So honestly, I think in a future episode, we're going to expand our crocodile exhibit. I think it's way too small and I just think we need to improve it a lot. So I think we're going to take out this middle barrier right here. And I think we're going to make that entire thing the crocs. So maybe. If we continue this pathway over here, cause crocs and flamingos kind of go together a little bit, not really, but kind of water-based, I guess. So if we, if we extend this path over here, let's make it a little bit longer. Not that long though. If we bring it out here, we could then kind of curve it around this way. If we shorten it, maybe a two. I can't, I can't get it to ride that fence good enough. So I think what we're going to have to do is move the fence a little bit. That's fine though. But if we curve it this way, oh shoot, we want to make sure we get it straight flat against it. If we curve it this way, we could bring it along this and, uh, and we could put the flamingos on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and, and get the croc fence set up here. It's not going to be perfect. I guess we can can curve this a little bit like that. That's good enough. All right. And then of course we're going to, uh, we're going to extend this over here just like so. And then we're going to bring it along this, this pathway. And like I said, eventually we are going to expand that croc territory, but not right now. That's not the focus of this episode. So now 
We've got to get something going on with the flamingos. And I feel, I kind of feel like we should make it a circle. And I'm, I'm getting this idea from, um, from, from Disney World, from Animal Kingdom. They have kind of the, the big circular flamingo pond when you go buy it on the safari. I don't know if you guys have ever been on it. I think that's what I'm going to go with here. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab a path. I don't really know how to make a circle, but we're, we're going to try our best. So we're going to bring a path out, probably not that far. Going to bring it out like this. And then ultimately, we want to make a huge circle. And I don't, I don't know how well this is going to work, but we're just, I mean, we're just going to try it. I wish there was a way to have like a perfect circle. You know what I mean? I don't think there is. If there is, then I certainly don't know how to do it. It's not bad. We're looking a little bit, a little bit weak up in, in this section up here. So let me, I guess this angle is probably a lot more helpful, huh? Dude, this is way harder than it looks. Something like that looks a little bit better. Is that going to be about as perfect as we're going to get? I think it might be, dude. I mean, it, it's fairly symmetrical. It's fairly even. It's definitely not a perfect circle, but I, I think we're just going to roll with it. We could sit here all day and I would never be able to get that perfect. So, uh, bam, we've got that. Now, let me see, in terms of our flamingo friends, what do we need for a fence? We need 300 square meters of land, 125 square meters of water, and a grade one fence of 3.3 feet. So grade one fence is gonna be pretty simple. We can do a hedge. That's kind of cool. A little hedge around the outside. I think we start it like this. We're gonna have the hedge come across and this is where we're gonna put the uh, the habitat gate. So we wanna make it big enough. Probably seven meters is gonna be good. So we can have the little hedge start like that and then we can make it longer and curved and we can kind of curve it all the way around this circle. That's not really a circle, but we're gonna pretend like it's perfect. Bring it around town, baby. Boom. There it is. All right, now can we throw a habitat gate on there? Let me see if we can get a habitat gate in there. Yes, sir. I mean, that's kind of ugly to have you walk up and immediately see that though is the problem. We should probably put it, I mean, we could put a staff pathway all the way over here. Whatever, dude, it's it's just a part of life. I mean, there's no really good spot for it. We might be able to move it later, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it here for now. All right, so that's, a massive flamingo area probably a little bit too big if you want me to be honest but we're just gonna roll with it now it said it said it was in feet right it, it's always so weird about this so 3.3 feet really that's just over a meter so we should be able to drop this but i don't know if it's actually gonna let us do that because again sometimes this game is weird and when it says feet i think it thinks meters i guess we'll see technically that's gonna be like 1.01 meters i'm gonna go up to one 1.11 1 .1. there we go hopefully that works out well for us but uh, all right this is gonna be our little flamingo area so now i think we do make an island but we're gonna have it have like a little land bridge so give me my terrain tool here and we're gonna make a, uh, a pretty, probably not too intense, but a pretty large one. And we're gonna have a bridge come out here and then there's gonna be an island on the inside. So I think we, maybe a little bit smaller. I think we kind of take it like this. Uh, we probably wanted a little bit bigger actually. Shoot, dude. I wish there was a way to just like, take what I have in my head and immediately put it on here and not really have to draw perfect circles and lines and stuff. Let's see what that looks like. First try, come on, Trev. Oh, not, not too bad. I'm, I'm down to roll with that. We just need to, uh, we need to bring this up a little bit here. We need to flatten this part out. So let's reduce the size and we're going to flatten this out so that the water doesn't come up over the bridge. And that way our, our keepers can get across. That's why we're doing it this way. Shoot. It always freaking does this, man. All right. Well, what we'll do is we'll just, we'll raise this whole section a little bit. Raise it just like that. That should, perfect. All right, nice. I kind of like it. I feel like it turned out pretty well. I feel like it got kind of close to the fence over here, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. So we've got that. I'm gonna say, let's um, let's get these flamingos in here. Let's go into our animal trading. We're gonna bring them in here and then we're gonna start decorating it. You know, I felt like it was it was a little big, but now that I'm looking at the, like, the whole grand scale of the zoo, I don't think it's too big, especially if we get up to 500 flamingos in there. I mean, when you look at our hippo habitat, it's smaller than that. It's about the same size as the saltwater crocs over here. So I think it's acceptable. Like we said in the last episode, I do want to start giving some of these guys a little bit more space. And uh, I think this will uh, I think this will be nice for the flamingos. I really wish we could have a perfect circle. That's making me so sad. 
But we're just gonna have to deal with it. It's fine, Trev. Not everything always has to be perfect. We're gonna be able to doll it up, make it look really nice, and uh, in the end, it's gonna be worth it. So let's, um, I guess, go ahead and speed up time a little bit. I don't wanna get too late in the night, but I definitely wanna get some flamingos in here. Do we have, we're dropping off all kinds of baby animals. Uh-oh, here comes our first flamingo. We only need one in here. We're gonna test them out, and we'll, we'll see what happens. So here we go. Bam! Look at that good looking, handsome boy. Or girl, whoever it is. Who are you? Bakir, he's a boy. 13 year old adult. All right, looks good to me, dude. He honestly looks very beautiful. I'm not gonna lie, very, very beautiful. Okay, so let's see what he wants. Let's see, he definitely doesn't have enough in his social group. He definitely wants some changes to his terrain and everything else, wants some hard shelter, and we're gonna have some, some work ahead of us here. So we could use more grass, we could use more soil and rock, and way less sand. They don't like all that much sand. So what we're gonna do is the outside is gonna be grass, and then of course the inside, the island is gonna be sand. So let's um, grab our little painting tool. So we're gonna do all soil in here, and then we're gonna grab some grass. We're gonna do short and long. I'm gonna say we could do short up here towards the front, and then it could kind of fade into a little bit longer as we go towards the back. All right, looking pretty good so far. Now we're gonna want some long grass. Let's go less intensity and we're gonna kind of fade this a little bit. And then we're gonna do full, full intensity long grass on the backside. All right, pretty cool. And then of course we're gonna need to go back over with soil on uh, the underwater sections. Boom. Okay, not too bad. Looks like we want a little bit of rock. I mean, we could throw some some rock on the island, I guess. It could be a straight up rock island. And then uh, we lost a little bit of the soil, but now we can bring the soil, bring the intensity and size down, and we can kind of have the soil come out this way. Almost looks like we're painting a little Bob Ross happy tree or something. That looks pretty nice there. A little bit more soil, come on. Maybe a little bit this way. Got to get it up to that 20% mark. There it is, boom. The flamingo habitat is uh, is looking pretty good so far. I'll do some more soil in here. This will all be soil to the short grass, to the long grass. All right, looking pretty nice there. I like it so far. So obviously we need a lot for enrichment, toys and food and, and everything else. We've got our, uh, our, our vets researching that, but obviously it's gonna take a little bit of time. So we can't quite do that yet. Our terrain is good. We need to make some hard shelter. We also need to give them a nicer environment. So we've got Asia, Europe, Africa, aquatic, tropical, temperate, and grassland. That's a lot of options here. So we're gonna come into continent. We've got Africa, Asia, and Europe. And then we've got in our biomes, uh, tropical, aquatic, temperate, and grassland. Tropical, aquatic, temperate, and grassland. So we have so many options here, which is really nice. Oftentimes it is not this easy, but we're we're gonna work with this. So when I think flamingos, I think palm trees. I think we're gonna go for some, some big palms, looking for the nicest ones. Oh yeah, stuff like this, this is gonna be gorgeous. So I'm gonna set these up on each side of the habitat gate, just like so. Actually, you know what, we could probably, we could probably put them here. Gonna make it like a, a grand entrance. You walk in, we've got palms everywhere. Just kidding, I think it, it'd look a little bit nicer if they were a little bit smaller, and maybe if we went all the way around the outside. Now obviously this is not um, this is not affecting the flamingos yet. I just kinda I kinda wanna make it look nice for the guests. So I'm gonna put one on each side and corner, all the way around the outside. We need to add some benches. We need to add some um, educational options and stuff like that. But yeah, I feel like I feel like this this is just gonna kind of set the scene. This is the the tropical section of the zoo, something like that. Those are pretty evenly spaced. No, not too bad. Evenly spaced around our very uneven circle, but um, that's okay. Move this guy back a little bit. Boom. All right. Cool. So that looks pretty good so far, but we definitely we've we've got a lot more to go. Looking at this, I don't I don't like the way we have it set up. Hold on. What I'm gonna do, let's let's view him. Hold on, let's let's see, let's see the terrain he wants. So now we can see this. I'm gonna bring this in. I'm actually I'm gonna make the the center thing green. And I wish we could make it can we make it a a brighter green? I feel like it's a very ugly green. I wish we could make it like a very bright, a bright grass. Maybe the long grass is a little bit better, but I like I like the idea of having short grass there. I just wish we had we need more green, dude. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that, and then we're gonna do rock 
around the outside. I just, I don't know, I, I feel like it, it should be nice and beautiful in the middle, like that's the focal point. So I'm gonna do rock all the way around the outside, just like so. Looks like we need a little bit more soil. We can do soil on the bottom of the uh, the lake, although I don't think that increases the soil for them, but we're still gonna do it just to make it look good. A little more soil over here like that, just like that. I feel like that looks a little bit better. I, I definitely like that more, and then we could, we could bring some of the soil in here, or maybe bring some of the grass back. Boom, like that. All right, I, I like that better. Rather than having a weird rock thing in the middle, that's something I don't really like about the the crocs over here that we're gonna fix as well. But yeah, we've got that. I think we definitely need to add a bunch of like rocks and stuff. And of course we need all the little bonus little plants and stuff like that too. Should we put like, I mean, Bengal bamboo. There's so many options here. Usually we don't have this many options. It's nice, but it's also a little overwhelming. What if we did something like this? That's kind of cool. Put this arch in the ground over the habitat gate. All right, I like that. That didn't really help us out with coverage or anything, but it still looks pretty cool. I feel like this thing, this thing looks kind of cool for a, a habitat bedding. So I'm gonna put this over here, not into the fence, but we're gonna put it like this. Maybe drop it down a little bit. All right, that looks pretty good. But then we definitely want to, uh, we wanna get the water out of that and we wanna raise that ground up some. There we go, put the water back. Shoot, we definitely, we. We don't want the water in their bedding area, so we might have to might have to raise this up a bit. Bam, there we have it. All right, nice. So they've got a nice little dry area for their bedding. We can throw down some, some habitat bedding. We probably want the extra, extra large. That is the extra large. Man, this is a big habitat then. This is gonna be good for us. The problem is, I don't know what we're gonna do if we end up getting 500 flamingos. I don't know how you house that many flamingos, but we're just gonna have to, uh, we're gonna have to, to roll with it and see how it goes. Hopefully we don't, we don't reach that 500 number for quite a while, but I guess we can always just kind of sell them off and release them to the wild when we need to. So that's their, their little habitat there. We're definitely gonna dress that up with some more greens and stuff. We probably could kind of start on that right now. We could have some like little palms. There's so many palm options, it's kind of hard to choose. I don't really love that. Maybe something like this. Yeah, this, this might, this looks a little nicer. Bam, all right. Nice little house there. I, let me let me make sure that that counts. I want to make sure that we're not we're not wasting our time. Hard shelter. He's good to go. All right, that's good. Now, how are we going to doctor this up and make this look cool? I feel like I want some rocks. Let me reset all of our filters. We're going to get some tropical rocks. I want some tropical rocks over here, and. I'm thinking about making like a rock formation around the island. Maybe we could raise the island up a little bit. Ooh, I kind of like that idea. Let's raise the island up and then put a rock formation around it. Something like that might be kind of cool. So if we put it like that, it's raised up and then we're gonna be able to put like rocks along the edge. Okay, I like where we're going with this. So now we're gonna grab our tropical rocks and we can kind of drop these guys in here along the ledge. This is coming together. I feel like this is just gonna add, it's gonna add enough difference to it. You know what I mean? I feel like just having a, an island in the middle and, and everything else, like adding a little green and stuff wasn't really gonna get it done, but I feel like this is truly gonna make things kind of interesting. We honestly, we probably wanna make another little land bridge across here. So I'm gonna get rid of this water. Let's delete these rocks. And then we're gonna make another, another little bridge to kind of link that so they can hang out in their little shelter, I guess. I, I couldn't think of the word there. Oh my goodness, I was thinking enclosure, but the whole thing's an enclosure. Their little shelter area. We're gonna make a little land bridge for them to be able to do that. So let's just grab this. We don't have to go too crazy, but if we raise this up a little bit to kind of match, not quite match, but you guys know what I mean. Something like that. And then we could probably decrease this a little bit. Let me see what happens when we put water in here. Not too shabby, I like it. Dude, this is actually looking super, super nice. Oh my goodness, I love it so far. So now we've gotta add in some of the plants and stuff though. So we're gonna come back. Let's go back, we gotta reset all this. Africa, Asia, Europe, aquatic, grassland, temperate, tropical. Is that what it was? I don't remember. We got it perfectly. So now we need to take some of these little plants and stuff and just make it look a little bit nicer. Just add a little bit of color. We do have a lot of grays and browns going on right now. We could even add some trees and stuff, but we just, we wanna add, add a little color to the entire enclosure and we're gonna be in good shape. So I'm gonna add some of that. We've got bracken. 
Got more trees we could throw in there. We could put some water lilies in there. Water lilies are always super beautiful. Got some little elephant grass we could throw in areas. I'm just looking for stuff that's not like, not too repetitive. Wanna have a bunch of different random plants and stuff in here. Just make it look nice for these guys. Maybe a little tamarind tree that adds quite a bit of color. Give them a little bit of shade. Not bad, we could put maybe one on each side. Is that, is that too repetitive? I guess that's, that's not too bad. From a coverage perspective, we're about 7%. I would, I'd like to put like the reeds and stuff. I think it'd be cool to put them along the outside, but there's no way we could do that whole thing and, and not go over on coverage. So I don't think we're gonna be able to do that. Unfortunately, that bracken looks pretty nice. Where's the big one we just had? We could have like a little little bracken up on top of the rocks in some areas. I guess directly on top of the rocks probably wouldn't make sense because there's no way it would grow, but we can kind of put these more on the sides. Might look uh, a little bit, a little bit more realistic. Dude, so many little details go into building these exhibits. Like you guys always ask for daily videos and I would really love to do daily videos on this game. And it's something that I think I kind of want to try to work towards eventually, but I'm going to be completely honest with you. It like these episodes take so much longer than you would expect. It's, it's way more than any other game that we play. And it's just kind of hard to keep up with, especially with like the holidays and everything else that's going on right now. So I always appreciate this, the support. I love that you guys love it so much, but at the same time, it's just like, it's a little, it's a little crazy at times. I'm trying to think of what else we should, we should use. I've just got so many cool options here. I don't want to overdo it. You can make it a little bit too cluttered and, and kind of ruin the vibe a little bit, but at the same time, there's so many cool things we can put down that I don't really want to stop. You know what I mean? Start putting some of these papyrus sedges out here. Not too bad. We've got more hedges we could put in there. Do we have a flamingo topiary hedge? That could be kind of interesting. Nope, it's not there. Tam Ooh, should we do a tamarind tree instead of the second? Uh oh, that's, that is a tamarind tree. Should we do a different style of tamarind tree? We've got a few different styles. I kind of like this small one the best though here. Let me at least, let me rotate this so it doesn't look like it's the exact same. Put it like that, boom. All right. I mean, I feel like it looks, I feel like it looks really solid. It, it, I don't want it to get too cluttered. I, I feel like if we keep adding little plants all over the place, it's just gonna become a little bit overwhelming. I think we could, I mean, we could do some like little lily pads. Let me get rid of all of our filters. Check out some lily pads. These things are always beautiful. We could add a couple, a couple more than what we already have. But yeah, I mean like you can get to a point where you're going too crazy. You can also get to a point where you're being kind of lazy and you're not adding in enough, but I I feel like we're at a good a good spot right here. I feel like I like this. This area up front is a little bit boring, but I'm not sure what else we would put there. Let me see where we're at for coverage. We're at 10%. We're starting to get towards the end. Let's let's just get let's get the rest of these guys in here and see what they think of it. Oh, I didn't even hold on. What's what's their uh their temperature preferences? Where do I see that? I actually think it might be in our Zoopedia. Eight to 40 degrees. So we are gonna need some, uh, we're gonna need some coolers in here. So we're gonna grab a cooler. I mean, we could probably put it smack dab in the middle. Is that on max, max blast? Yeah, it's on max blast. So we're gonna drop this to probably like 35. I think overall, for the most part, they should be good. We get up to about 44 during the day, so they might be a little bit warm. We'll see if there's anything we have to change, but uh, look at them. They're checking out their new little home. They kind of, they, they like it so far. And the good news is there's a lot of, of real estate here for us to, to be able to switch things up in the future if we need to. Look at him up on one leg, just killing it. Eating all those little bugs off of himself. Oh yeah. You look fantastic, my guy. And we've got some more friends coming in for you. He's running. He's running. Where are you running, bro? Where are you running? Dude, I mean, this is... Low key, kind of beautiful. I think we did a pretty good job. I'm hoping that as we get more of these guys in here, as we complete research to be able to get some of the enrichment items and things they need. Social groups going up, enrichment's still bad. We probably, why do we have protesters? Our aardvarks are hungry. We have a large food bowl in here, but nobody's coming to get it. I'm gonna call a keeper. Go take care of that, bro. Sometimes the keepers don't 
they don't come and fill the bowls and I don't understand why. I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete this and let's, let's get a new bowl. I, it's so weird. I, I know there was a bug back in the beta where they would fill the toys before they filled the food bowls, which doesn't make sense. I, I feel like I still kind of run into that option, that problem quite a bit. So I'm gonna get another large food bowl. I'm gonna place it, I'm gonna place it right there. Hopefully, see we're getting keepers coming in here. I'm gonna call a keeper and a vet and a mechanic. I don't know. Hopefully somebody comes and fills the food bowl. I have no clue why they're not doing that. I mean, do we need another keeper? Here, I'll just, I'll hire another keeper. I have no problem with that. We've got seven keepers currently. I'll hire another one and I'm gonna set him literally right next to the thing. All right, looks good to me. We've got some gym's bot maturing, so we're gonna have to check that out. Looks like we've got our first group of people heading over here towards the flamingos. Eventually, we're gonna have to set up like a, a tram, like some transportation so people don't have to have to walk so far. But um, yeah, let's, let's continue looking at these guys, dude. Oh, beautiful, I love it. Hopefully we start getting some babies very, very soon. We need to make them a little bit happier though. So we need enrichment, terrain's good, coverage and plants and everything else is good. Really just enrichment and adult population needs to go up. So I did, we didn't even buy enough flamingos, dude. We need up to 10. We've got seven right now. So we're gonna have to go back to our animal trading and we're gonna have to see if we can find any on the market. Hopefully none that we have to buy with, with conservation credits, but I guess we're just gonna have to see what happens. There are none available to buy right now. Okay, that's, that's not good. We're gonna be okay though. So we're gonna come into habitat here. We're gonna look back at the, uh, we're gonna look at the greater Fl flamingo. And I just realized that we didn't even put anything down for food and water. So we're gonna do a big food bowl over, uh, over right here. We're gonna do water right here, right in front of people. And then do we have anything enrichment figured out? Waterfall and metal frame attachment. What? How does that work? Oh, that's pretty sick. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and move that here. And we're gonna have a really cool waterfall right in the very entrance. Why did that get so weird? Why did the ground get so gross right there? It's when we added the waterfall, shoot. So if we put it over here, will it get all weird? I don't want it to ruin the look of our, our setup. No, that's good. So we've got a cool little waterfall here. We could set that up with some some bushes and stuff. So let me, let me move this. We're gonna swap it around this way so the water is gonna fall into the actual water. And then we could get some of the, the nature bushes and whatever else. And let's let's add these in. I'm thinking something like this so we can kind of set this up here. I mean, that doesn't really give us a lot of color. I want I want a little bit more color in there. I guess it's fine though. I mean, it's, it's, it's not bad. We could even put some rocks up around it. Could be kind of interesting. Ooh, actually, I like that idea. Hold on. Let's put rocks around it and then put bushes near the rocks. So we could go with something like that. And then now we're gonna add a couple of bushes just to make it look, make it look a little bit prettier. Ah, that looks pretty nice. Maybe something a little, little less intense on the flower side, something that, that rides the edge a little bit more. I want room for them to be able to walk through it. That looks pretty nice there. I guess I'll have it go all the way around. To be honest, I've never, I've never seen these options for the, the waterfall. I really like it. I think it's pretty cool. All right, that that actually looks pretty good. I like that addition right there. And then don't call me crazy, but can we get can we get some vines on this thing? I was kind of hoping for something a little bit more green. We have those kind of what are, what are the things we have? What are they called over here? I was hoping for something with a little bit more. Oh, ivy. Okay, so we're gonna put some some ivy on here. I don't know if. It, if it's local to where you'd find these flamingos, but I feel like having some ivy on here might be kind of cool. So we'll go ahead and move this, something like this here, just like so. And then we could put this, put this up here, kind of like that. Oof. Got a little bit of work to do here, but you guys see what I'm doing. Something like that. We're just gonna roll with it. It's not perfect, but it looks, looks fairly good. I'm gonna bring it out a little bit. Boom. Just to add, oh shoot. It's kind of hard to get it to, to move exactly where you want it to. Like I want it closer to us. There we go. Something like that. All right, that doesn't look too bad. I like it. Are these guys still happy is the real question. They should be getting happier. Their meal quality is not great, but we're gonna work on that. Toy enrichment is already at 100%. That's all they wanted right there was just, just a waterfall. That's it. These guys are easy. We're gonna come back into habitat. We could add a little sprinkler. 
I mean, I'm down to put a sprinkler right out here. Kind of a cool little thing. I just realized we have no power nor water out here, so we're gonna have to set that up. I'm thinking probably set it up on this side. So we might wanna have a little staff path come off this way. Yeah, we're gonna grab a path, make it a staff path. We're gonna have it come off this way and then we're gonna put a little water and power type thing out here. We actually may want it more, more over here. So I'm gonna bring it out like that, bring this this way and then kind of bring it back, back this way. And we may even wanna put a little keeper hut and stuff here. We'll see how it works out. But I mean, these guys, we could put, I guess it's not that far. Here's our current keeper, like main staff area. It's not that far. It's farther to get over towards this side of the zoo. So I guess we're fine. So yeah, we're gonna put a little, uh, Let's put a little little power and water treatment facility here. Bam, just like that. So these things should be powered. We should have clean water and everything else. That's, that's looking pretty good there. Um, what else do we need to, to do? I guess just more research. As we get more research, we're gonna be able to improve their food quality, get them some more enrichment items and stuff. So really, we just have to wait. I guess um, the sun's going down. We should probably just wait out the night, huh? Oh shoot, it's happening. Calm down now, it's happening, woo! At least they're happy enough to mate. It's, it's currently, the, the circle of life is evolving, it's growing, and uh, she's just gonna go sniff the flowers afterwards because that was amazing. Let's go, baby! Is this the male? Yeah, this is Jamila. Jamila and... Uh, and Ariz just uh, just went at it, and our first breeding of the flamingos is complete. Let me see. Speaking of which, I, I mean, really the big thing, we need a little bit of enrichment, which their research is taking forever. The other thing is we need more of them. So if we look here, oh shoot, okay, this is this is good. Let me adopt some of these 20, 20 years old. They're a little older, but that's fine. I'm not too worried about it. So we're gonna adopt all three of these, and now we should be able to move them in. That's gonna give us the minimum of 10 and that's gonna make our other seven flamingos very, very happy. We got our first flamingo research complete, which is good. I, I've never seen it take this long before. Like it, it takes so long to work through this. So you gotta bear with me guys. It's probably gonna, ooh, Jamila's about to have offspring. It happens that fast, huh? A one month incubation period. She's gonna go have them in the waterfall. Why not? Dude, I've got a feeling it's gonna low key get a little out of control. As soon as we get like 50 flamingos in here, it's just, it's it's gonna be craziness. I wanna see this baby. Where's the baby at? Have the baby already, come on. In the waterfall. Oh, there it is. Little baby, little baby. So if you guys don't know, flamingos, they're actually white, but the pink comes from the stuff they eat. So you guys can see the baby here. I didn't realize they were that tall when they were babies. That is a newborn flamingo right there, almost as tall as his mom. I don't know how that came out of her, but um, all right, not too bad. But yeah, we're gonna keep researching these guys. It's honestly probably gonna take a couple of episodes to max them out. Usually it doesn't take this long. I've got some of my best vets on it too. I've got a five-star vet on it. So it's, it's gonna be a while, but um, slowly but surely, Oh, we've got another flamingo expecting offspring. This is exciting. Slowly but surely, we are gonna gonna keep uh, keep improving this habitat. So let me see what other, they like balls. They'll play with a ball, all right. I'll put a ball over here. They like ice ball enrichment. So I can put an ice ball maybe more over here in front of their little, little hut. They like slow feeders. So we could put a slow feeder over here. All right, not too bad. Is our happiness going up? Meal quality could be better. Let's see if we can, in, no, we can't We can't go better than grade one right now. We've got to wait for more research. But it does look like our enrichment's going up. We need better food enrichment. I thought that slow feeder would be food enrichment, but it's not. Oh, we've got a forage box. Dude, put a forage box over here. I guess it's not gonna fit over there. We could put it like right here. Boom. Forage box should help out. Still not doing anything for food enrichment. We've got an herb scented marker thing. Throw this over here. That's not doing anything either. Oh, that's because we're on, we're on the ostrich. My bad. We're on ostrich. We need to go back to flamingos. That was stupid. Okay, so for flamingos, it's pretty much the same thing though. They aren't gonna want that ball. They do like the herb scented marker, but I mean, that's still not doing a lot for us. We need some more research. I feel like that's probably a good spot to stop it though. I mean, we wanted to set up a new breeding ground and I would I would venture to say that we did exactly that. Look at these guys, dude. They're very happy. 
We've already got breeding happening. We've got more coming in. And, and like I said, I think it's going to be kind of an exponential thing. I think as we start, it starts slow and it gets faster and faster. And then it's going to be kind of low key, a little out of control, kind of like our, uh, our ostriches are right now. Dude, look, look at all the baby ostriches. Are you, are you kidding me? That is ridiculous. All right. Anyway, I'm going to see you guys in our next episode. Drop a like if you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. The zoo is looking great. Peace out.